So in this video, we're going to talk about objects in R. What kind of objects are you going to use and encounter as you're working in R? Uh, I think the first thing to keep in mind when I'm using the word object, what I mean is that in R, everything is an object and every object has a name and a value. And so if you're coming from something like Stata trying to learn R, this might be kind of weird to you. Um, in Stata, you just have a data set in memory. You don't have to call that data set something in particular, it's just there and everything you do kind of operates on that data set. That's not gonna be true in R. You could have multiple data sets loaded into memory and each one of those data sets is gonna have, be an, a separate object with its own, uh, own name. So you can call it, uh, call each data set on their own. So for example, um, I've got some example code here that we can talk through. Um, you know, in the first line here, we're creating an object called A and just assigning it the value of one. This isn't a data set. This is just a purely just creating a, a simple object that's just a single number. We can do the same creating an object called B that gets given a value of two. And then we can start manipulating those objects. We can add A and B together and get three. We could create a third object C and assign it the value of A plus B. And then when we call C, we see that it has a value of three. So this is kind of the most basic and simple example of what objects can be in R, but it's just important to see everything you're using in R is gonna have a name, is gonna be an object and it's gonna have a name and a value associated with it. Um, there are different kinds of objects though. There are numeric objects, everything we just uh, talked about on that last slide were numeric objects, so numbers, um, even things that aren't, you know, like if you just typed in pi in R, it has the, the an object already kind of preloaded in R called pi, which has the value of pi. Um, so all those things can be considered numeric uh, objects. Um, we can have things like character, um, you know, where, where we're using it's an object that is text instead of numbers. And then uh, the third one that we'll probably run into regularly is uh, a logical object. That is something that takes the value of true false, or sometimes you can just abbreviate that T and F. There are some other kinds of objects, but um, uh, they're kind of uh, weird cases that we're not going to necessarily use as often as things like numeric character and logical. So you might run into them, but we're not gonna talk about them today. Also, every object has some kind of a structure. So that could be a vector, a matrix, a list, a data frame. Once again, this isn't an exhaustive list of every type of, of structure uh, that exists in R, but it's gonna be the main ones that we interact with, and we're gonna talk about them in the rest of this, this video. Um, you can use the functions like class, type of, or str to get some information about an object. If you're, if you're kind of using something and you're not sure, oh, is this thing actually organized as a matrix or as a, as a list or as a vector or a list or something like that, you can use these functions to get some more information about the, what, you're, what you're working on. Um, so the first type of uh, structure is a vector. And a vector is just a collection of elements of the same type. And so there are a couple of different ways that we can create vectors. Uh, we can use this C function here. C, which I, I think it stands for combine or, or maybe concatenate or something like that. But it just combines elements into a vector. The other thing we could use is this SEQ. It's a kind of like sequence or just a, a colon to create sequential vectors of numeric elements. So we can see that in action here. Uh, if we were to type in C and then inside the parentheses, one comma one comma two comma three and so on, we're creating a numeric vector of seven elements. The first element is one, the second element is one, the third element is two, the fourth element is three and so on. If we're trying to create a sequence of numbers though, an easier way to do that is to use this colon operator. And here we can just say zero colon nine. And what we're doing is we're creating a different sequential uh, numer or a different numeric vector, in this case, a sequential one, 10 elements long, zero, one, two, all the way up to nine. Um, you might notice here, 
I'm not actually creating new new objects. Um, you can do this. You can just type something into R and it'll spit out the result without actually creating an object. That's that's fine. It's probably not what you want to do as you're actually creating your own code for your own research. It's you're usually not going to want to just do some math and not have it saved somewhere. But just for an example here, that's what I'm doing. Um, Okay, back to this, uh, you know, we can also create character vectors. I said character is another type of, uh, another class that we can use in R. So we could create, you know, this character vector using, once again, using that C function, we give it the first element, hello, the second element, world. And now we have this two element character vector where the first element is hello, the second element is world. Um, one thing to note about vectors is that all the elements have to have the same type. So if you ever try to put together, create a vector of elements of different types, for example, trying to put numeric character and logical elements all together into the same vector, it can do that, but it's going to have to convert some of those objects into different types. So that's what we're trying to do here putting together the number one, the word hello, the number three, the word world, and then the logical operator true, or the logical value true. What R is gonna do in this case is just convert everything to a character. So we still get a five element lit, uh, vector out of it. It's just that now we have a character vector where instead of having the number one here, we actually have the text, the character one, instead of an actual numeric value. So just something to be aware of as you're working with vectors. The other, uh, the next type of uh, uh, or structure of object that we talked about is a matrix. The matrix is in a lot of ways like a vector. It's a collection of elements of the same type. It's just that it's arranged into two dimensions instead of just kind of being like a one dimensional uh, array like a vector was. Um, and so R actually has this function called matrix that you can use to arrange a vector into a matrix. So taking a vector of values and converting them into this two-dimensional matrix. Matrix is going to take uh, three, three, well, it could be more, but you can use three, um, three inputs to create your matrix. You have to tell it what your data are going to be. That's that vector that you want to put into the matrix. Then you have to tell it either how many rows or how many columns are going to be in the matrix. It can figure out based on how much data you have. If you give it, you know, 10, a vector of 10 elements and tell it you want two rows, it automatically knows that means we need five columns. So you only have to give it one of rows or columns. And then also, um, I think it's always worth specifying this by row, which is going to be a logical. So a true false indicating if it's true, it means it wants it, you are telling R to take your data values and put them across by row. If you had false, it's instead going to go down the first column, down the second column, down the third column, and so on. So it's just kind of telling it how do how do you want the data arranged as you create the matrix. So here's an example of a matrix. We're creating a two by five matrix. Uh, we're just going to give it data. 1 to 10 sequentially, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, all the way up to 10. We're going to tell it we just want two rows. That means we're going to have five columns implicitly. And let's tell it by row equals true. We want it to organize the matrix by row. Um, and so what we see here, we end up with a two row by five column matrix. Across the first row, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then across the second row, we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, uh, you know, especially as we're talking about coding up estimators, a lot of time we're going to end up working with matrices um, and doing some kind of matrix manipulation and matrix algebra and multiplication to, 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 to do our work kind of more efficiently. Uh, so it's just worth knowing that, that these matrices exist. Like I said, in a lot of ways, they're like vectors. They're just arranged into two dimensions instead of one. All right, the third type uh, of, uh, or, or the kind of structure that we talked about is a list. A list is gonna be a collection of elements that can, they can have different types and different structures. So in some sense, you can almost think about everything else that we're talking about, vectors, matrices, 
we haven't talked about it yet, but data frames, a list is almost like a super object that can contain a, a series of these smaller objects inside of it. Um, so for example, uh, well, so let me first just say we can use the function list to combine elements into a list. So what I'm gonna do here, just to kind of show off what a list might look like, is create a list of first a numeric vector, then a numeric matrix, and then a character vector. So we're gonna create a, the first object, or the first element of this list is gonna be this numeric vector, two, four, six, eight. Then we're gonna create a two by two numeric matrix as the second list element. And then for the third list element, we're gonna create this character vector ABC. So we just plug that into this list function, just separated by commas. And here's what we get out. Our first list element is, um, is this numeric vector right here. Our second list element here is um, this matrix, this two by two matrix. And then this third list element is this character vector, ABC. And so what's nice here is that we can take things that are different. We can take a, we can have numeric and character together in a list because different elements of a list can have different properties. We can have a vector in a matrix together. We can do all of that within one list. So sometimes this is a nice way to organize things when you uh, know that it's gonna have different classes or different structures. And then the last kind of type uh, or structure that we're gonna talk about in this video uh, are the data frames. A data frame is gonna be how you typically interact with data in R. Um, so it's, you can think of it as being like a structured table of data arranged into two dimensions. This is kind of like, if you are coming to this from Stata, this is like a Stata data set is the best way to think about this. Each column is a variable, each row is an observation. Um, if you want to get really technical here, and this might help you down the road at some point, is technically a data frame is a list of named vectors of the same length. So each vector is a different variable, and then the length of each vector equals the number of observations. So it's almost like, you know, you might have um, data on on people's ages and incomes and marital status or something like that are organized into a data set, organized into a data frame. But really it's like each one of those things, age you could think of as actually being a vector. Income is actually a vector. Um, marital status is actually a vector that have just been kind of put together into this structured way to create a, a data frame. And it's actually a list of those vectors. Um, if that doesn't make any sense, that's fine. It's probably not gonna be helpful to know that, but it could be at some point, so I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, the way to create a data frame, a lot of times you might just already have a data frame or you'll load data in a way that just creates a data frame for you. But if you're trying to create a data frame from scratch, you can use this data.frame function to combine your vectors into a data frame. Um, so here I'm just doing that as an example. We're gonna create uh, a variable called x, which just takes on the numbers zero, one, two, a variable called y that takes on the, the, the values two, four, eight, a variable called z, which takes on one, five, seven. And then because this is a list, technically we can have different classes within the same data frame. So then we're gonna create a w uh, variable that takes on the values a, b, and c. And so we just plug that into this data.frame function. And here's what comes out, right? It's, uh, we can see across the top here, we have our, our variables as columns, column X, column Y, column Z, column W. And then we have, you know, for X, 0, 1, 2, for Y, 2, 4, 8, uh, arranged in, in that way. Just like, you know, you can imagine, typically you're gonna be working with much larger data sets than just three observations, but at least this, I, I hope, gives you a uh, kind of, example of what a data frame might look like. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about functions and packages in the next video.